Hello folks, Happy New Year, welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to take a look at this frame generation mod that's doing the rounds. So basically what it allows you to do, if you're running an NVIDIA 2000 series, so like a 2060, 2070, 2080, or a 3000 series card like I am, so 3070, 3080, 3060, you know, so on and so forth, what it allows you to do, it allows you to use frame generation. Um, now, of course, frame generation is an exclusive feature to the NVIDIA 4000 series. Like, we can't get it if you've got a 30 series or a 20 series. This mod kind of allows you to do that with an asterisk, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So what it does, it allows you to turn on in the sim the little switch where it says to turn on frame generation and doesn't actually use NVIDIA frame generation. What it does, it goes and uses the AMD FSR frame generation instead and it allows you to use that in the sim. It's quite clever. Um, so I wanted to check it out and I wanted to see if there are any drawbacks and if it really does make a difference. So I'm going to run through the installation process. What you need to do is go to nexusmods.com. I'll leave a link in the description and that's where you can download it. I will say this is a mod that does a lot of registry editing and you know I know it says here virus scan safe to use but honestly do this at your own risk. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. It, it may not be. It may turn out in six months time that this was all a terrible idea and we only find out then. Just tread carefully. Um, maybe don't do it if you're worried. Um, but I'm going to do it for the science. Um, so stay tuned and we'll see what this does. All right, so we have two windows here. On the left, I've just got a standard Explorer window and we'll go looking for our game install path in a moment. Over here, we've got the uh, the mod that we've downloaded from Nexus Mods. I love that file name, by the way. DLSSG to FSR3 AMD is better. .dll. <laughs> Incredible scenes. So what we need to do, we need to find the folder where our sim is installed. Now, I've installed the sim via Steam. If you've installed it through, say, the Windows Store, um, your installation path will vary. I'll put some um, information in the description to help you find your way. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this PC, my C drive. I'm going to go to Program Files x86, come down to Steam, then come down to, I believe it's Steam Apps. There it is. Uh, common Microsoft Flight Simulator, and this is where we need to be. So we're in the right place. What we need to do now, we've got these uh, registry entries here. We've got a disable NVIDIA signature check. So what you need to do is double click this. It says here, um, basically, are you really sure you want to edit the registry? Because what we need to do, we need to disable the NVIDIA signature checks that would basically prevent this from working. So we're saying um, disable those and then we can do what we want with this mod. Again, potentially dangerous. So if you're worried, don't do it. I'm you know, gonna do it anyway, but you know, think twice before you do it. I'm gonna say, yes, I really do wanna continue. Um, and now it says here, the keys have been changed in the registry, so we can call that a success. Next thing we need to do is get this file here. <laughs> I love the name of it. Uh, DLSSG to FSR3, AMD is better. And we also need to get the NV ngx.dll we're going to copy those and we're going to paste them into here over the go if you want to undo this obviously you need to delete those files from your microsoft flight simulator installation folder and there's also a restore nvidia signature check so this file here if we double click it will undo those registry edits that we just did by running the disable nvidia signature checks uh, again, just do this at your own risk. This is like when, whenever anything involves the registry and Windows, I start to get the heebie-jeebies a little bit because that's where uh, you can kind of saw off the branch you're sitting on to some extent. The only other thing we need to have a look at is our settings. You need to make sure that hardware accelerated graphic scheduling is on HAGS for short. So click system on the left over here, go to display, scroll down to graphics, change default graphic settings and you've got hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is on. I believe that needs to be on for this to work. I've got to be honest, I didn't actually see it in the readme file, but I've got a funny feeling you're going to need it. You needed it for frame gen on the 40 series, and it wouldn't surprise me if you need it for this too. So if you do have any issues and you find that hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is off, that could be why. So just a quick rundown of the settings we're going to be testing out today. Uh, Anti-aliasing, we're going to be using TAA, and the render scale is at 100. I've turned off vertical sync. I normally have that on because um, I'm on a 60 hertz monitor, and then I normally turn it on and do it at 50% the monitor refresh rate. So essentially V-Sync's running at 30 FPS, which is usually fine. But for today, we want to see the sim chase as many frames as it can. So we're going to leave that off. I run on DX11, terrain level of detail. 
125 and as you can see everything else is more or less a, a blend of ultra or high I won't go through it all I've got a graphic settings video um, but yeah that gives you an idea of what we're running at only 1080p um, Again, because on a 3070, 4K is a, is a little bit of a stretch, but hopefully uh, most of the time we are CPU limited anyway by the SIM. So that's kind of kind of the whole point of frame generation in, the, in that it allows you to bypass that CPU bottleneck and kind of get a load more frames that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get. So it'd be interesting to see how that turns out. Okay, so we are here at Gatwick. This is the flightsim.to version of Gatwick. So quite a demanding airport known for its uh, ability to bring aircraft to their knees and we are in the PMDG 737-800 so on both counts there we're kind of asking quite a lot of the sim both the airport and the aircraft are quite FPS heavy hitters I haven't got any FSLTL running uh, obviously the, all the gates as you can see are empty so if we we're on VAT sim right now it could be a damn sight worse in terms of FPS as well with FSLTL running and as you can see, we're sort of hovering around the mid 30s, 30, 35. And this isn't with any DLSS frame generation mod enabled. This is just the standard kind of out of the box settings for the sim. And yeah, sort of mid 30s ish is kind of where we're at. Normally I would limit the sim to 30 FPS. Um, but for the purpose of this video, I just want to let let the sim chase all the frames it can possibly chase. Kind of for the science, really. Oh, didn't like that. I find this area of the airport a little bit heavier hitting than the area we've just come from, in general. I mean, that's purely anecdotal, but that's just a general feeling I get. But yeah, doesn't seem to be impacting the frames too much. Just staying steady at around kind of mid 30s, kind of mid mid to high 30s, I guess we could say. Almost crept into 40 FPS there. So we're not doing bad. All right, let's switch it over. Let's go and enable this frame gen mod, and we will see what the difference is. All right, folks. So we're back in the sim. We have enabled our frame gen mod. So I'll just quickly go into the settings and show you what we've done. We've had to change our DX version, DirectX version, to DX12. You then will have to reboot the sim, unfortunately. And then you now get NVIDIA DLS frame generation it can be on. I've left the AA to TAA because I feel like that gives a much better image quality than DLSS. DLSS, you kind of get like smeary kind of uh, dials and screens and stuff like that. I don't really like it. TAA with frame gen is a very nice place to be. So that's all good. The question is, has it affected our frame rate? So we're back where we uh, started in the prior uh, video and we were getting around sort of 30, mid 30s ish, kind of plus or minus two or three frames. So, sort of 33 up to 38, I think was more or less what we saw. So, that then begs the question what do we get now? So, I don't actually know. I haven't turned on the performance overlay yet. So, it's going to be a surprise to me as well. I'm going to quickly do that now. Does it get us anywhere near 60 FPS? Let's find out. No way, that is not 95. Yeah, I was going to say. But we are clearing 60. Look at that, nearly 70 FPS. Whoa, okay. And visually, I can't see... I mean, obviously, we're just still at the moment. So we'll go for a little taxi. But visually, I cannot see any kind of major issues uh, with what we're looking at here. That is quite impressive. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go for a little taxi. Keep in mind, we're at 1080p. So clearly, we were CPU bottlenecked. And we've now managed to bypass that CPU bottleneck with frame generation. Keep in mind we're at Gatwick from flightsim.to in a PMDG 737-800. They are two very, very heavy add-ons for the sim. And we are now clearing 60 FPS. Now, in my experience, this is only anecdotal, as we turn the corner here, it can be a slightly harder part of the airport to run. I think it's probably because of all the gates and things that we're going to come up to. But look at that. 64, 63, 66, 67. That is quite impressive. That is very impressive indeed. 
Um, I'm not going to turn here. I'm going to go to the next one just to get us a little bit closer to those uh, terminal buildings. See if we can see if we can get it down beneath 60. Okay, just keeping an eye on things like lamp posts here as we turn because that's probably where you're going to see any weirdness with like shimmering and shadows and you know artifacts. But I would say that's pretty good. That is pretty good. So keep in mind, this is not NVIDIA frame generation. I know that that's what the settings said. We're, we're tricking the sim. So that's what the mod does. It tricks the sim to say, yep, turn on NVIDIA frame generation. But actually in the background, what's running is AMD's FSR frame generation technology. That's how it runs on the NVIDIA 20 series, 30 series, because the actual proper NVIDIA frame generation is exclusive to the 4000 series. But that is very good. I mean, look at that. We're into the 70s now. We're getting nearer to the runway. You see, now I'm wondering, could we potentially run at 4K like this? All right, I'm going to do another lap. I'm going to take us back round to uh, that kind of bridge thing where we started to keep it consistent. I'm going to switch into 4K. And I'm very curious if we can get anywhere near 60 FPS. I doubt it. I mean, I'm only on an RTX 3070, keep in mind. So I think maybe where we are now is quite possibly the sweet spot. But I've got to do it for the science. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we're back at the bridge holding steady at around between 60 and 70 FPS. We are in 1080p, so let's jump into the settings and change our res to 4K. Let's just see. I'm just curious. I've got to have a look. Uh, there we go. That'll do. Is it going to make it go weird for you? Uh, yeah, I'll keep the changes. Uh, let's get rid of the NVIDIA overlay. Is that going to come back nicely? There it is. Okay, cool. Apply and save. Go back. <laughs> i got a funny feeling I'm going to be pushing my luck here. Give it a minute to settle down. I mean, 20 FPS, that's obviously... Uh, that's that's the that's the straw that broke the camel's back there, isn't it? Give it just a second, see if it settles down. It might just be the stuff's loading in. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's not it's not happy, is it? Let's. Uh... God, it does look gorgeous at 4K though on this screen, <laughs> given that I'm on a 4K TV. It's probably a, a VRAM issue, I would imagine. Yeah. So the main issue is is that the sim's trying to use in excess of 10 gigabytes of RAM, and of course I'm only on an 8 gigabyte card. And of that 8 gigabytes, it doesn't give the sim the whole 8 gigabytes because, of course, your system actually needs some of it. and It gives it about 6.5-ish, and, and it's trying to claim 10. So my poor uh, my poor graphics card at the moment is just freaking out at 4K. That's a bit of a shame. Yeah, so if you look carefully, that is like 20 FPS. That is definitely the straw that broke the camel's back. There, there's no way that it's playable at 4K. So 1080p still is the... Uh, Probably the place to be, for me at least, on a 3070, 5600X system. 22 FPS is what the NVIDIA overlay is uh, reporting. Keep in mind, you have to use like the NVIDIA overlay to see the frame gen FPS. So those 22 FPS there, that includes the frames that have been generated. If I was to remove that so you can see the FPS debugger tool built into the sim... Let's get rid of that. You can see the actual sim is reporting 11 FPS. So frame gen is working. It is doubling up my FPS. But the issue that we've got here is that the 3070 is only an 8 gigabyte card. Um, so yeah, 4K, as I suspected, is out of the question. Um, I guess we could try 1440p just uh, very quickly while we're here. Because that might be a little bit more on the sensible side. Uh, where is it? 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 2560, 14, 40. Keep the changes. Apply and save. Back we go. Alright, it might need a minute to settle down because, of course, we're coming from 4K. So the sim, there, there you go. See, so it's much happier now. Sim is reporting around about 34 FPS. Um, keep in mind though, again, I'm not sure if you can see it because these this text is quite small. We've been allocated 6.4 gigabytes of my 8 gigabytes uh, VRAM because, of course, my PC needs some of it. The sim still wants 8.3 of that, so not quite as extreme as before, um, but still, we're still the wrong side of the amount we have. However, if we load up the NVIDIA performance tool, it's going to be doubling up. We're getting around 66, 68. So a similar situation to what we saw with 1080p. 
really in terms of frames. Let's go for a little taxi to see if it holds while we meander around. Let's see if I can get rid of that annoying bit from underneath there. there you go. Display FPS off. Yeah, I mean, it's holding, isn't it? It is holding. I mean, obviously running at DX12, I think, is a little bit more VRAM heavy than if you're on DX11, but you need DX12 to run frame gen, so it's, it's a trade-off, really. I mean, I, at the time of recording, yesterday NVIDIA announced the 4000 series supercards, um, and I'm probably going to get one of those. In fact, I've done a video all about it on my other channel. So I've started a little... I've had the channel for ages, but I'm... Uh, putting a bit more work into it it's a, uh, just like a tech channel really so videos that are more broadly about technology and not directly linked to the sim will go over there um, I'll put a link in the description if you wouldn't mind going over and subbing that would help me out so much um, I've got the watch hours requirement to get the channel monetized but what I don't have is the subs we need a thousand subs um, which ironically is the exact opposite of what happened on this channel we had the subs we had like way more subs than we needed way above the thousand subs but we just couldn't get the watch hours um, so it's funny how things work out but look at that FPS again 69 70 so it seems like if you got a card like a 3070 1080p 1440p does a fairly nice job of it and again visually I'm, I'm struggling to see any weirdness I know with frame generation you can kind of get some odd things sometimes up here and you probably will get those but actually, it's pretty damn good. Pretty good indeed. I mean, don't think this is some sort of miracle cure for, like, micro stutters. It is still Microsoft Flight Simulator, after all. You are still going to get the old weird glitch here and there and, like, a... Well, you know how it goes. Um, but overall, I would say that's pretty good. I mean, do it at your own risk, of course. I mean, this is a, a mod that... You know... I don't really know the developer. I don't really know where it comes from. I just know that I've seen it around a lot. Not just in The Sim, but in other games. I've seen people in Cyberpunk testing it and uh, other such games. So I was curious to see it for myself. Actually, that is pretty damn impressive. Anyway, folks, I'm going to leave it there. Um, thank you very much for watching indeed. Let me know if you've got any questions, any comments, any thoughts, if you've tried it. Um, obviously, try it at your own risk if you want to. I can't hand on heart recommend that you do because editing registry files and you know it's dangerous territory to be in but uh yeah i'd be curious if you got any thoughts about it all to hear from you and uh if you're not subscribed be sure to get subscribed i was looking at my analytics over christmas and a staggering amount of my viewers are just not subscribed so if you want to get subscribed that will uh, mean that you don't miss any future videos live streams and other such content but i'm gonna leave it there i'm actually quite impressed by this i'm gonna leave it there thank you very much indeed for watching and as always happy flying